Welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm Kathleen Walter. With us now from Newsmax Studios in New York is historian David Leffer. He's the author of the brand new book, The Founding Conservatives, How a Group of Unsung Heroes Saved the American Revolution. And David, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you. It's a real pleasure. Well, most people think our founders were united in their quest for independence, but in the book you write that there were three undervalued heroes who actually saved the American Revolution. Did the American Revolution really need saving, and if so, from what? Uh, there are actually, I write about it, more than three, and they're all incredibly important. The war effort was actually going terribly for much of the war. Uh, the radicals who really pushed for a fast, uh, rapid uh, push for independence really predicted a much faster war. They thought it'd be over in a few months. Conservatives were the ones during the revolution who said this is going to be a long drawn out conflict. We're fighting the most powerful military machine in the entire world, the British military, and we need to be better prepared. And they single-handedly first delayed independence until America was better prepared. And then after the war effort went uh, really south, they took over and uh, stabilized the American economy, got the weapons from France that kept American forces in the field and uh, provided crucial battlefield victories, which really led to our, our birth as a nation. And on this 4th of July, we pay tribute to our founding fathers. Most Americans think of Washington, Jefferson, and Franklin. But in the book, you say we should also recognize this lesser known group that helped save and create the nation uh, through their own sacrifices and efforts. Who exactly were these founding conservatives and how did they influence the revolution? Uh, there were a number of them. Uh, so one of them is Robert Morris, who basically single-handedly financed the American economy after it fell off a cliff. And out of his own pocket, he paid Continental soldiers who were mutinying. They actually refused to march toward Yorktown, um, and he gave op he broke open these casks of gold and silver coins to pay them because, in many cases, they hadn't been paid in months or years. Um, you had Governor Morris, who literally wrote the Constitution. Uh, starting with the words, we the people, and he also inserted many clauses that protected American business, which allowed America to become the great economy it is today. Uh, you had John Dickinson, who penned the Articles of Confederation, um, and really, without Dickinson, many of his contemporaries said, Americans would not even have opposed British oppression in the first place. He really articulated American grievances. Um, you had Philip Schuyler, who engineered the crucial victory at Saratoga. Uh, you had um, John Rutledge, the governor of South Carolina, and he basically became South Carolina's uh, one-man government in exile after the British took over his, his state, and he rallied the forces which eventually drove the British from, from the state. So without these men, America as we know it today would not exist. David, why do you think they've been forgotten by history? You know, the history of the American Revolution itself is fascinating, and it's changed multiple times over the course of the last hundred years or so. Um, the idea that the revolutionaries, the founding fathers, were divided into radicals and conservatives was actually well established at the birth, at the start of the 20th century. Starting in the Cold War, however, historians made a conscious uh, effort to downplay any hint of strife among the founding fathers, and they argued that America's political traditions were essentially liberal. Um, I've actually, only in recent years, have historians started coming back to the older point of view, saying that the revolution was divided be into radicals and conservatives. Many of these new excellent works on history that go back to uh, the work of the beginning of the 20th century focused on the radicals of the American Revolution. And as a former journalist, I sensed the scoop. No one has ever written a book about the uh, founding conservatives who saved the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. And is this why you're so convinced that American conservatism uh, actually traces its ancestry back to the revolution uh, instead of looking toward Britain and Edmund Burke or, or, or even Barry Goldwater for that matter? Yeah, I mean, that's actually one of the, I think, the most newsworthy points of the book, which is that most histories trace the birth of conservatism back to Edmund Burke, the British statesman who uh, attacked the excesses of the French Revolution. I discovered through my research that the founding conservatives said the exact same things as Burke and held very similar positions. It's just that they said it about a decade and a half before Burke. So my contention is that Americans, conservatives and liberals alike, should not look to Europe for the birth of the conservative tradition. We have our own legitimate, homegrown conservative tradition that we need to look to. And you write about extreme revolutionaries of that time who threatened capitalism. What parallels can we draw between then and now? And who or what do you view as the greatest threat to U.S. capitalism today? Well, there's been a traditional uh, historical uh, tension. Uh, I mean, it goes back a long time, but you can really see it in the American Revolution between those who advocated liberty and those who wanted greater equality. And the two don't always go together. Uh, Robert Morris, who I mentioned a second ago, 
founded America's first modern bank, not even modern bank, he founded the first bank in the United States. He founded the first multinational corporation. He was one of the richest merchants in the world um, at the time. And uh, he said, it is against the principles of liberty to prevent a man from the free disposal of his property. Basically, the founding conservatives were saying, we're fighting Britain because they were trying to interfere with our commerce, and we're not, allowed to, we're not about to let our fellow Americans interfere with our right to make money either. Um, the radicals in the revolution actually came close to passing a law. They took over the government of Pennsylvania, and they came close to passing a law restricting the amount of money anyone could possess. If you possessed more than a certain amount of property, the government would come in and seize it. And conservatives said, you are not going to do that. And they fought tooth and nail to block that. Uh, the radicals, after they took over Pennsylvania, um, they limited the freedom of press, of the press. They limited the freedom of speech. They restricted and regulated prices. They founded jails for anyone who disagreed with them or, and with these new laws. And they started disarming anyone uh, who was not a radical. And conservatives were literally up in arms over this. Last question for you. Would the founding conservatives be pleased with the state of conservatism today? And what, if anything, could modern day conservatives learn from the founding conservatives? I think one of the most important lessons uh, the founding conservatives can offer modern conservatives is that, um, well, one thing was changing drastically during the American Revolution, and that was greater equality. That was happening. Um, and you had groups who had never had the right to vote or even to run for office before suddenly gaining immense political power. And conservatives had to learn, they had to craft a new message so they could appeal to these new voters. And if you look at today, modern conservatives are also facing a radically changing uh, electorate. The demographics of the United States are changing. And, dem and the modern conservatives have to look back to what the founding conservatives offered, which allowed them to stay in power. And what they offered was prosperity. They said, if you follow us, if you follow our belief in free market capitalism, as opposed to the price restrictions and controlled economy that the left wanted during the revolution, we will lead you to greater prosperity. And I think that's a message that can appeal to all Americans, no matter what the era. All right, fascinating stuff. Again, the book is called The Founding Conservatives, How a Group of Unsung Heroes Saved the American Revolution. David Leffer, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.